When aqueous solutions of copper 2 nitrate and potassium carbonate are mixed, a precipitate forms. Write the net ionic equation for this reaction. So the first thing I want to do is actually write the formulas for my copper 2 nitrate and the potassium carbonate. So I know that I have copper and nitrate. I know that nitrate has a, a minus 1 charge, so that means that my subscript on copper is going to be 1 and that for nitrate it's going to have a subscript of 2 because the charge on copper is 2 as given in the name of the compound. So we have copper nitrate and we're told that this is an aqueous solution, so we mark it as aqueous, plus potassium carbonate and we get the 2 as the subscript on carbonate from the charge on the carbonate ion which is minus 2 and we know that this is also aqueous. So now we have our two reactants now we have to figure out our products. Now notice that there's only one pair of products that could form and potentially form a precipitate. Because copper is already paired with the nitrate, there's no other way that we can combine these two and possibly get a precipitate. So we have to look at copper being paired with either potassium or carbonate. Well, copper and potassium are both cations, so they are not going to form a compound. So the only other possible compound we can form is between copper and carbonate. So we can say CuCO3 and we actually won't have any additional subscripts because the charge on copper is 2, the charge on carbonate is minus 2, so we have a 1 to 1 ratio between those two ions. We're going to put the parentheses in but we're going to leave that blank for right now and we're going to look at our other product which is going to form between the potassium and the nitrate. So potassium has a plus one charge, nitrate has a minus one charge, so we actually won't get any other subscripts in there because we have a one to one ratio between those. I do see that I'm going to need a two in front of the potassium nitrate in order to get a balanced chemical equation. I'm also going to leave the parentheses blank there until we determine what the phase is of that substance. So we know we started with two aqueous solutions, now we have to evaluate the solubility of both copper carbonate and potassium nitrate. And what we know about carbonates is that they're generally insoluble compounds. So we're going to label this with an S because copper is not one of the exceptions for carbonate. When I look at potassium and nitrate I know that either of those ions will make something soluble so I can label this as aqueous. So what I see is that the only precipitate that forms is copper carbonate and so that's going to be the precipitate that forms. But what I want to actually write is my net ionic equation. So what I have written here is a complete molecular equation. Now I'm going to write my ionic or my complete ionic equation and when I do that what I'm going to do is write anything that is labeled as aqueous as an ion. So I have copper 2 plus aqueous plus nitrate aqueous plus potassium aqueous plus carbonate aqueous. Because if I were to look at the solution, before I combine these two solutions, what I would see are these ions present in solution. I would not see units of copper nitrate or potassium carbonate, but I would actually see the ions. So this is what's present in the solutions when I combine them, before any reaction occurs. So now I have all the ions on the reactant side. Now I need to look at the product side. And I'm not actually going to break up the copper carbonate, because remember it's a solid, it's in soluble in the solution in the water so it's not going to be broken into its ions it's actually going to precipitate out of solution as that solid um, compound not as those ions but I still have my 2k plus and my two nitrates because those are an aqueous solution so now I have my molecular equation here I have my complete ionic equation here. Now what I want to do is look for things that are exactly the same on both sides, those spectator ions, and cancel them out. And I see that copper goes from copper 2 plus aqueous to copper in the copper carbonate compound. There is, a, there is a change there, so that's not a spectator ion. Next I look at nitrate and I see aqueous nitrate ions, aqueous nitrate ions, so I can mark them out. Likewise with potassium, I can mark those out. And I notice that with my carbonate, it goes from aqueous ions into a solid compound. So what I'm going to end up with for my net ionic equation is Cu2 plus aqueous 
plus CO3 to minus aqueous yields copper carbonate solid. So what I've done is I've pared this down to the stuff that is actually changing in this chemical reaction. Because these are an aqueous solution, all of these species in the reactant side are present as ions, as are the potassium nitrate in the products. This, what I've shown down here at the bottom, is the only thing that's actually changing. So I'm going from copper and carbonate ions in the aqueous phase to the copper carbonate solid product. So this bottom reaction is my net ionic equation.